For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Andrew Pintar leading off the top of the seventh for BYU. Cougars trailing 1-0. Dollard back out on the mound. Andrew Pintar, first pitch he sees, lines it past the shortstop and into left field. And that's a leadoff single for the freshman Andrew Pintar. Yeah, great start right there for this inning. Trailing a run, facing a guy who's got about 80 pitches on the game now here into the seventh inning. Their ace. Here's your chance. Go get him right here. You have your two, three, four hitters up. Go get him. Hayden Latham coming to the plate. Hayden with a strikeout and a flyout. But now he comes to the plate with nobody out. Runner on first. His team trailing 1 0. Dollard delivers to Latham. Swing and a miss for strike one. A healthy cut there by Hayden Latham. Yeah, sure is. Big hack at that slider right there. Yeah, third baseman playing in. Middle's double play depth. Outfield's normal depth. The right field is actually shaded towards right field line, so there's a huge right center gap. And he actually hit a home run, which would have been off the scoreboard here, you know, in, in Arizona. That's right, against the New Mexico right Lobos. Center. Yeah. The 0 1 pitch to Latham. Check swing. Oh, the ball job. gets past the catcher, Emerson, and Pintar alertly on his way to second. Now standing at second with nobody out. The Cougars have a man in scoring position. Yeah, it was a really huge read right there by Pintar. Ball and dirt read on the slider. Check swing for Hayden. And uh, Pintar moves up, so no outs runner at second. And Down a, a run. And a one ball, one strike count to Hayden Latham. Third baseman still playing in. You would think Coach might go to the sack bunt here, but it, it's tough because it's your three hole, right? It's your power guy. It's your RBI guy. Opportunity to get to Dollard here. The 1-1 pitch. Mm. Inside corner for strike two. It was a great pitch by Taylor Dollard. Man, that slider's good. He can throw it, swing and miss away. He can throw it at the front hip to the right. He's got command of that whenever strike. he wants. Yeah, it's really good. Not a battle here. Hit a ground ball to second if you're Hayden and advance that runner to third. Pintar at second. The one-two pitch to Latham. Outside, yes, yes. the ball gets past Emerson once again, all the way to the backstop. And Pintar now standing at third with nobody out. Jeff, I think I just need to start uh, giving that slider a bunch of praise like we just did, right, about all that <laughs> command. Because that one, he, is that the trick? Yeah, he overgripped it right there and threw it into the other batter's box. Catcher tried to block it but couldn't. Gets under his glove. And Pintar moves up. So now 2-2 count. Infield's going to be playing in here in the seventh. All Hayden has to do is just hit a sack fly. Tie this game up. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Two wild pitches. Have Pintar advancing to second and now third. The 2-2 pitch to Latham. Misses inside. Now a full count to Hayden Latham. A yeah, good battle here. Be on time. Be ready. So the middle infield actually scooted back here. So really the only thing in is first baseman's in. Third base is a little bit in, but he's still behind the bag. Great chance to score a run right here. Full count. The payoff pitch to Latham. Misses outside, and Latham earns a walk. And now runners on the corners, and nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Yeah, it's a really, really good job right there by Latham to lay off that pitch because that full count breaking ball was a good pitch. That's the one he wants you to swing at. That's the one that we swung at probably ten times tonight. The number four hitter, Mitch McIntyre, steps into the batter's box. A bunt single in the second inning. Flied out to left in the fifth. Looks like we're going to have a pitching change. Head coach Larry Lee. Out to the mound. Well, I see him signaling. Well, yeah. yeah, I thought he signaled before he came out. I will say this, that they only have one left-handed relief pitcher, so you don't have a ton of guys that can come in and uh, and face this left-on-left -left matchup. And this is their horse, right? He's only had 85 pitches. But you can tell that this inning he's been he's been rattled a little bit, right? After the, the single to Pintar, it was pass ball, pass ball that got him to third and then walks Latham. So now Coogs with first and third, no outs with your four hole. And McIntyre here, who's last time up, hit an absolute missile to left, right? He's put two good bats together. Got the sack, got the got the drag bump for a single, and then 
ends up getting the uh, – the, the line out, so well, he's leaving. He's leaving yeah, and in. you're right. I thought Coach yeah. Lee made the signal when he w- walked out of the dugout, but T was out there to have a conversation, and they're going to leave Dollard out there. A lot of that is talk about defensively what you want to do. It's a great time right now to hit McIntyre. Absolutely perfect opportunity. Runners on the corners, nobody out. BYU down one nothing. That could change though. First pitch to McIntyre, bounces in front of Emerson, uh, but not too far there. away where he can't get to it. Boy, Emerson's earning his pay here. Yeah, Hayden's got to get to second on that one. Look at this third baseman, Chef. He's playing right on the line right now, the third baseman. It's unbelievable. Huge six hole. There's so many gaps for McIntyre to hit right now. One ball, no strikes, nobody outs. The 1-0 pitch, low for ball two. So he goes slider in the dirt. Now he goes change up down. So he does, he's afraid to throw Mitch a fastball because of what he did last time with it. See if he comes through it right here if he tries to go that backdoor slider. Great time to hit if you're Mitch. Great opportunity for BYU here. McIntyre at the plate. Runners on the corners. No outs. The 2-0 pitch from Dollard on its way. Swing and a line drive down the left field line that's going to get down and roll all the way towards the gap. The left fielder slides as he's on his way in. Two runs will score. McIntyre scores from third. Latham scores, and BYU leads 2-1. to one. Fantastic job right there by Mitch. Hits a line drive about a foot fair down the left field line. The left fielder can't, gets the ball off the carom off the side wall, and when he was trying to step to throw in, he kind of slipped. He slipped twice. Yeah, and throws it towards... It throws it over to shortstop, and Coach reads that, and so he just sends Latham as well. And so two RBIs for Mitch right there, and now he's standing on second with nobody out, and now Deming up. Fantastic answer by the Cougs right there. BYU, which trailed one nothing coming into the top of the seventh, now leads 2-1, to one, still nobody out, and BYU with a runner in scoring position, Deming at the plate, McIntyre at second base. Swing and a miss by Deming. Well, runner on second, no outs. This is where you, you want to execute here, Shep, to get one more run. Leading by one's great, but you want to get up by two or more if you can. The 0-1 pitch to Deming. Swing and a miss. Yeah, slider, slider. Both of them swung on. Healthy hacks. Quickly behind, no balls and two strikes. Now, if you're if you're Deming, you want to just, hey, shoot a ball to the four hole here. Hit a ground ball that way and advance Mitch. Big hits, some wild pitches have helped BYU out here in the top of the seventh. Good take. 0-2 pitch outside, one ball and two strikes now to the Cougar first baseman, Austin Deming. Dollard still on the mound. That's the first two earned runs of the season for Dollard as well. He had 18 consecutive scoreless innings to start this year. The one-two pitch to Deming, swing and a miss. McIntyre stealing third, Fantastic. and he's safe. Deming strikes out, but McIntyre was on the move and steals third base. That's the Cougars' first stolen base of the season. Yeah, caught Dollar napping right there. He knew he was going to go to a breaking ball pitch to strike out Deming, and he had a great read and stole that bag. So just like it's just like Deming getting a job done there and getting a guy to third. He, he's still at third now with... One out, and now you have the left-handed Cowden up who has got a chance to uh, extend this lead to 3-1. Ba- to one. Base hit, sack fly. Anything is going to score McIntyre from third. With the 92 pitches now here. Coach Lee is going to leave in his ace. One out. McIntyre at third. First pitch to mm, Cowden. Cowden, that's the one. 70 miles an hour on that pitch from Dollard. Looks at strike one. Yeah, get me over breaking ball right there. That's one that you hope that you just, okay, I'll take a good swing at that and just hit a sack fly to right. Battle right here. Infield's in. It's a great time to hit, Cowd. Cowden, they strike out, and they ground it into a double play. The 0-1 pitch. Good. Outside, ball one. His velo is still the same, still 90-91. Both teams now with four hits. 2-4-1 for BYU, 1-4-0. For the... Hometown Cal Poly Mustangs. BYU 2-2, two and two, Cal Poly 2-2. Two and two. Oh, this is a fun time to hit if you're Cowden. Run third, infield in. 
I knew I was just hit something hard here, and most likely you're getting an RBI. He had a good sack fly in his first start against New Mexico. Could use another one right here. Valdez on deck. Cowden at the plate. 1-1 one, one pitch. Good. Great take on a pitch high and outside. Two balls and one strike now to Josh Cowden. Great time to hit right here, Josh. See the ball elevated. Put a good swing on it. The 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Now two balls and two strikes. A good swing there. Probably was ball three. Fastball running away. Now he just got a battle. Put a ball in play. All about team at bats right here. McIntyre at third. One out. BYU has taken the lead 2-1. Cowden at the plate. Dollar delivers the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a foul back to the screen by Cowden. Nice job to stay alive by the sophomore. Come on, Cowden. Find a way right here. Cal Poly scored a run in the bottom of the fourth to lead 1-0. Two runs have scored for BYU in the top of the seventh, and they're looking for more with only one out and a runner on third. 2-2 pitch to Cowden. Looked at a pitch that could have been strike three. Yeah, ball's down, though. Ball was a little down. low. Now a full count to Josh Cowden. Three balls and two strikes. And Still you know battle. Dollard wanted that pitch. Yeah, the, the pressure's on him right here. He doesn't want to give up a run. He's got to go to his best. The payoff pitch to Cowden. Swing and a miss, and Dollard strikes out Cowden for the second out of the inning. Yeah, fastball right down the middle, just blew it by him. Now with two outs and a runner on third, the senior, Abe Valdez, will face Taylor Dollard. Can the Cougars add to their 2-1 lead? Or will Dollard step up? And end the scoring at 2-1. to one. That's what good pitchers do right there. They pitch themselves out of jams. Abe's got to make him pay right here. Find a way. Abe lined out and grounded out. Looks at strike one from Dollard. Abe over for 2 on the day. Abe wearing number 11. Hitting 333 coming into the game. Or 333 now. Ball wide. And this time, Miles Emerson Man, able to keep the ball in front of him. He dove a good three feet to his right to keep that ball from getting past him. That's unbelievable right there. That ball ricochets to the right of him there. Mitch scores. But he's able to keep it in front. And a great job by Mitch and Coach Littlewood down there at third. To have a good look at that and realize it wasn't going to get away from Emerson. One ball, one strike, two outs, runner on third. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Valdez, high and outside for ball two. He's up over 100 pitches now. This would definitely be his last inning, if not batter. Big spot right here for Abe to get a big two-out knock. Senior leadership right here. Two balls, one strike. Two outs. Dollar delivers to Valdez. Swing and a ground ball is just foul over the third base bag. That was not foul by much. No, he got a hanger slider on the inner half that he just barely hit foul. Two balls, two strikes, two outs to the BYU catcher, Abraham Valdez. McIntyre on third. A big run at third base to add to BYU's 2-1 lead here in the top of the seventh. Can Valdez come up with a big hit here with two outs and a 2-2 count? Dollard gets the sign and delivers. The 2-2 pitch high for ball three. Really good at bat here by Abe. Hey, he's got first base, first base open. So walking Abe here isn't the worst thing. He's going to go to his best pitch to try to strike him out. It's either going to be a strikeout or a walk right here. 
your Abe, you want to make sure you don't swing at something out of the zone. The payoff pitch to Valdez, swing and a miss. And Dollard strikes out Valdez. But the Cougar offense comes alive in the top of the seventh. They score two runs and lead Cal Poly 2-1, heading to the bottom of the seventh on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Reed saw action against Gonzaga in the season opener. Reed actually picked up the win against the Zags in that game. Comes in with a record of 1-0. and First batter he will face, the leadoff man, Cole Cabrera. And I'm going to give a basketball score, so spoiler alert. The, the good news is, same time the BYU offense was coming alive. The this is BYU Radio on 107. This is BYU Radio. 30 seconds to go, now 15 seconds to go, 85-75. So the Cougars are going to pick up a dub before hosting number two Gonzaga on Saturday. The 0-1 pitch to Cabrera, swinging a foul out of play. Now Reed quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes to Cabrera. I tell you what, that's a big win. Those are the hard wins, Shep, when uh, you're supposed to win. Yep. That team barely, I think they've only ever beat you one time at home, ever. Santa Clara is always kind of a scary team. They They're are. always good, good enough to upset somebody, but yet still a, a game that you should win. The 0-2 pitch. And it just went final. BYU does win. They win by 10, 85-75. And Reed McLaughlin strikes out Cole Cabrera. Reed comes into the ball game and strikes out the first batter he faces. Nice job by Reed. Yeah, 91 mile an hour paint right there. Nick Marincons, the batter. Nobody on. One out, first pitch, hits the outside corner for strike one. Marin Collins with a walk, a line out, and a fly out. 0 for 2 on the day officially. The 0 1 pitch, swing and a miss. McLaughlin quickly ahead, no balls and two strikes. That's the thing I love about Reed. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the hitter, he is going to attack every batter he sees, and I love that aggressive nature. That's what he does. BYU leading 2-1 here in the bottom of the seventh. The 0-2 pitch. Gets the call on strike three, and Marincons goes down looking. Reed comes in, faces two batters, strikes them both out, and now two away here in the bottom this of the is seventh. BYU. Well, gets them both looking like you said. Just elite paint is what I call that. Elite paint right there. 91 on the black for strike three. Brings up their best hitter. Beasley. Steps into the batter's box. Looking at two outs. Nobody on. First oh, he, pitch from McLaughlin. His first ball he's well, he, thrown. I was about to say he does throw a ball. I didn't know he <laughs> had that in his repertoire. Also a final from the Smith Field House. Number two, BYU men's volleyball. Defeats Concordia in straight sets. Congratulations to Sean Olmstead and the Cougars. Swing and a foul off to the left. One ball and one strike. Women's basketball score for you. BYU at Santa Clara. Third quarter, 4.45 to go. The Cougars with a four-point lead at 37-33. And BYU softball taking on UC Riverside. They're in the bottom of the sixth. Cougars leading UC Riverside 5-2. Our score here is 2-1 BYU. Beasley. Swing and a foul. Popped up. Nice diving effort by Latham. Lays out completely in foul territory, but it's going to be a foul ball and a very long strike two. One ball, two strikes to Bradley Beasley. Nice day so far for BYU Athletics. The Cougar baseball team looking to add to it, leading 2-1 here in the bottom of the seventh. Trying to begin this four-game series with a win. 1-2 pitch. High to Beasley for ball two. Two and two now the count. Man, I love watching McIntyre throw. It's so fun. Just pounds the zone, mixes in and out. The 2-2 pitch. Ground ball to the third baseman. Nice job there by Peterson. Throws over to first, but one hops, Deming, can't come up with it. Bounces all the way to the fence. 
And now Beasley standing at second base with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Oh, that's frustrating because, yeah, it was a tough play, but he got the tough part done, right? He's able to, able to field retreat it. his feet and get his glove in the right spot, fields it, and then just an awful throw to first, and Deming couldn't knock it down, and Beasley moves up to second because of it. So another big error here for the Cougs, and now Cal, Cal Poly is one hit away from tying this game up on another unearned run. Yeah, E5. Tate Samuelson at the plate. Leading this team in RBI, and he has an RBI opportunity here. First pitch from McLaughlin. Low and in the dirt. Great block by Valdez. Otherwise, Beasley's at third right now. One ball, no strikes to Tate Samuelson. There's two outs, but now the Mustangs have a runner at second base. 2-1 Cougars. Samuelson already has a base hit. They struck out and flight out. McLaughlin looks back at second and delivers the 1-0 pitch. Misses inside. Now two balls and no strikes to Samuelson. It's crazy what Ayers do to, does to pitchers, right? Reed was locked in for the first two batters, right? Beasley gets on with an error, and then it's first two pitches. Those are the worst two balls that he's thrown today, right, down in the dirt. Two balls, no strikes. Samuelson the batter. The 2-0 pitch. Ground ball. Past the second baseman and into right field. Beasley rounding third, sliding into home. And that's an RBI single for Tate Samuelson. And this game is tied in the bottom of the seventh, 2-2. Two to two. Every time, Shep, every time, you always see it. Airs come back to bite you. And right there, an awful air there by Peterson. Throws the ball in the dirt, wasn't even close. Beasley gets to second. And then he hits a CNI single in the four hole that bounced probably six times, right? And Beasley scores easily to tie this game up. You've got to play catch. Two out RBI single by Samuelson. This game is tied two to two. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. The game is tied. The Mustangs have now retaken the lead in terms of hits. Well, and that's why that, hitting BYU 5-4. That's why that last inning was so huge. Why one run's not enough. You need to expand that lead. We had a runner on third with less than two outs, and we had back-to-back -back strikeouts. And don't go up three to one. And now it's a two-to-two -two ball game. Pinch hitter Kyle Ashworth in for Blake Wagonseller. First pitch from McLaughlin, taken for strike one. Kyle Ashworth from Santa Ana, California. A freshman, six feet, 180. The 0-1 pitch, misses inside, one ball and one strike. BYU led 2-1. to one. They had two outs in the bottom of the seventh. And the big two-out RBI single by Samuelson tied this game. It's now 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a pop fly down the left field line. Barney there, or rather Hobbs Nyberg there, defensive substitution for Barney, makes the play, and that retires the Mustangs in the bottom of the seventh, but not before they tie things up with a two-out RBI single into the top of the eighth, all tied up to a piece on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You named your son Steve, Jimmer, and Lavelle. 1984 is a place of joy to you, not a dystopian book. Your blood runs blue despite what science says. You're BYU, and we get you. Because we give it our all to ensure the Cougs can too, be it injury prevention, rehabilitation, or orthopedic surgery. And we do the same for you. Intermountain Utah Valley Hospital, official medical provider for BYU athletics. Learn more at intermountainsportsmed.org. Cougar fans, are you looking for fast, friendly, fair service? Lube Dock, located at 131 South State Street in Orem, is your full service oil and filter change specialist. Full service includes oil and filter change, plus vacuum and fluids top-off service. They are also number one in the state for emissions and state registrations for vehicles. No appointment needed. Open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Lube Dock, fast and friendly service for over 35 years. 
Every weekday on BYU Radio, you'll hear something that makes you smile on The Lisa Show. How do you think your project will fare against the other parents' projects at the no, Science Fair this year? It will be done. We yeah. did all the things. Yeah. Something that stirs your imagination on constant wonder. How much infinity with its wonders can fit in a narrow time frame? Something that influences your important decisions on top of mind. Anything online can be faked to look legit. Visit BYURadio.org to learn about all of our shows. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougars facing a new pitcher here in the top of the eighth. Number 47, Dylan Villalobos, right-hander, junior out of La Habra, California, 6'3", 215. This is his fourth appearance in three previous appearances. He has an ERA of nine. He's given up four hits, three runs, all three earned, as well as two walks. That's two strikeouts. So, so far, this has been a guy that been able to score on. And BYU, which trailed 1-0, then led 2-1, to one, now comes to the plate in the top of the eighth in a 2-2 ball game. Brock Watkins leading things off here in the bottom, or excuse me, the top of the eighth. Brock 0 for 2 today. Swing and a foul. Strike one to Brock Watkins. Well, Chef, the eighth inning has been our inning this year, right? Yes, it has. It's been our inning. Watkins facing Villalobos. Time called by Brock. Home plate umpire gives Villalobos the go-ahead and now delivers the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a foul out of play once again. Brock now behind Villalobos, 0-2. Bill got a battle here. He's got a slider he can go to. He's a fastball change-up slider guy. Put a ball in play and put pressure on the defense. You saw what happened last inning. Make teams make plays and things happen. The 0-2 pitch to Watkins. High for ball one. It's like uh, Jacob Rogers is on deck, number 16, to pinch hit for Brian Call. And he was just called back yeah. for Brian Call. Watkins awaits the 1-2 pitch from Villalobos. And delivers. A little hanger. Get down, get down. Line Atta drive boy. into shallow center. One hops the center fielder. And that's a leadoff single in the top of the eighth for Brock Watkins. Yeah, really good job right there. Got a hanging breaking ball. Hit it right back up the middle. And, hey, we got a leadoff hitter on just like we did in the seventh inning. Nice job by Brock. Came into the game hitting 0-71. As we mentioned, was 0-2. for 2. Gets a big leadoff single here in the top of the eighth inning. This is how things started for BYU in the seventh. The leadoff single by Pintar. Your attention, please. Pinch hitting for number 28, Peterson, number eight, Brian Call. Brian Call officially listed as the pinch hitter. Well, this is officially where, you know, you would think you might try and sack bunt here, but uh, coach likes Brian swinging. He likes his left-handed swing, and see what happens here. 2-2 ball game. Nobody out. Watkins at first for BYU. The batter, Brian Call, the pinch hitter. Out of Mission Viejo, California, facing Dylan Villalobos. First pitch to Brian. Does not swing at strike one. Look where that third baseman's playing. He's so far in on the grass. So far in. If you're going to bunt this ball, you got to bunt it towards towards first base right here. Make the first baseman field it because that third baseman is four or five feet inside the grass. The 0-1 pitch to call, and he lays down a bunt, which will go foul down the third base side. Call now behind. No balls and two strikes. Oh, well, now you have to battle. Down 0-2. Didn't execute the bunt. BYU trying to get Watkins in the scoring position at second base, but Call has his work cut out for him now, facing an 0-2 count. Villalobos delivers the 0-2 pitch, high for ball one. And Villalobos' fastball is, you know, 87 to 90. That was 87 right there. So it's not a ton of heat. This is where you're looking for 
See if he'll make a mistake up in the zone. You can hammer. Another big gap in right center. The one-two pitch to Brian Call. Misses outside, evening the count at two balls and two strikes. This crowd doesn't like it, but that's definitely a ball. Call was down 0-2. Now worked the count to 2-2. Two and two. Watkins at first. Nobody out. 2-2 two -two ball game in the top of the eighth. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Call. A little chopper past the pitcher. The second baseman oh, can't get the ball baby. out of his glove. He fielded it. Corio, but he couldn't get the ball out of his glove. And now runners are at first and second. Great job by Brian Call hustling out of the box. And with nobody out, the Cougars are back in business in the top of the eighth. Yeah, nice little swing and bunt right there. A little swing and push bunt. Just he, once he got it over the pitcher's head, it was going to be a tough play by the second baseman. Nicely done right there. Hobbs Nyberg is announced, like, and they're uh, going to pull him back. I think they're going to uh, bring in Jelly. Danny Jelilich appears to be the pinch hitter. That's exactly who's coming out. Grab the bat, grab the batting helmet. And Jelly is making the walk out to the batter's box and he's coming in with a prime opportunity his team with runners at first and second nobody out well this is a good spot because Jelich is one of your best bunters he's your fastest player on the team okay first and second nobody out you know it's a bunt situation right and you you get a good bunt down here move the guys over is your first job but hey a good enough bunt and we'll have bases loaded no outs In case you were wondering, they did give Brian the base hit. So that's two singles to lead off the top of the eighth. Jelilich at the plate, facing Villalobos. First pitch, Jelly showing bunt, fouls it off. 0-1 to Danny. It's kind of like he wanted to pull back there, and he didn't, and fouled it back. coaching staff and now the infield out to have a discussion well, this is all right here about defense how they want to defend this this might be a spot where you'll see like a wheel pick third baseman will crash in hard shortstop will take off and maybe they'll try to back pick at second from the second baseman or it could just be a straight wheel what they're doing right now is coach Lee's just talking about defensively what they're going to do and this is where you just have to if you're Joe Litch get your barrel out there early and just get this thing down anywhere but the pitcher and uh, and let these two runners advance. We got Watkins has pretty good speed at second so he should be able to beat it out to third but here we go. Coach Littlewood took that time while the Mustangs were having a conversation on the pitcher's mound to talk with Jelilich and the two base runners and now home plate umpire says let's resume via Lobos <laughs> Another showing bunt by Jelilich, fouls it back, and now Jelly in the hole 0-2, and we'd certainly expect to not be bunting here. Yeah, Coach Littlewood doesn't often call it two-strike bunts, but he has done it not often. It's the little executional things that have been frustrating. You now had a runner at third, less than two last inning, couldn't drive him in, and then can't get a sack bunt down here. Third baseman's playing even with third right now. The 0-2 pitch, Jelilich swings and strikes out. Villalobos retires the pinch hitter Danny Jelilich. So now the Cougars with runners at first and second and one out. Yeah, that's a big strikeout. Danny's in there for one job to sack Bunham. Couldn't get the job done. Strikes out. Brings up Pintar who, who got the rally going last inning with the leadoff single. The freshman, Andrew Pintar. Has an opportunity with runners at first and second here in the top of the eighth. Give his team the lead once again. It's 2-2. Facing the junior, Dylan Villalobos. The first pitch to Andrew. Low for ball one. Call at first. Watkins at second. Pintar at the plate. Villalobos on the mound. 
One ball, no strike is the count. 2-2 ball game. Andrew one for three today. The 1-0 pitch to Pintar. Low for ball two. Pintar seeing the ball well. And where the third baseman's playing, Chef, he's actually even with the bag, but he's off. He's off into that six hole. And Pintar, hey, he's hit a couple balls this year down that line. Just pull it. So you you just get fisted down that line right now, and it's a double, possibly two runs. Two balls, no strikes to the batter, Andrew Pintar, the freshman, Spanish Fork. The 2-0 pitch just gets the inside corner. Two balls and one strike. These late inning opportunities are huge for both teams, and BYU's got an opportunity now with a runner in scoring position and only one out. Can Pintar come through? Single in his last at bat, but love a single here or more. The 2 1 pitch to Pintar. Looks at strike two. Now two balls and two strikes. Well, took a fastball down and away there. He didn't like it. Now it's a 2 2. Now you just got to battle. See a ball elevated and put a good swing on it. If you're BYU, you got to find a way to score at least a run. Beginning the inning with two runners on and nobody out. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Runners on first and second. Pintar at the plate. Time called. Villalobos will step off. Pintar will step out of the batter's box. The third base umpire called time. That was weird. Well, here we go. 2-2 two -two count. Big pitch for both the Mustangs and the Cougars. Villalobos delivers the 2-2, low for ball three. And a nice block by Miles Emerson. He's been a busy guy over the last couple innings. Yes, he has. Well, you've battled, you've battled, you've battled, you've battled. Now it's time right here win this thing. Full count. Runners won't be moving because there's only one out. Huge, huge hole down the left field line there where the third baseman's playing. Find a way, Pintar. Get on base. Get Latham up right here. Latham on deck, as Tuck just mentioned. The payoff pitch inside for ball four. And that's a walk to Andrew Pintar. With one out. out. And Hayden Latham coming to the plate. BYU has the bases loaded. Man, Pintar early this year has acted like he's a veteran leader. He's had such big time at bats for us late in games. One thing I noticed just from the beginning, from even the first game, defensively he looked completely under control. And you're starting to see that now. Yeah show itself at the plate as well. This is where your three-hole who has struggled tonight, okay, he's 0 for 2. Okay, he did walk his last time up. And we're going to have to do a pitching change. Yeah, Larry have, Lee yeah. heading out to the mound. Aiden Latham is the batter, and Coach Lee is going to take the ball from Villalobos. We'll have a pitching change for the Mustangs. We'll take a break. We'll come back. One out, bases loaded for the Cougars here in the top of the eighth on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The new pitcher for Cal Poly, number 23, Brian Wu, a right-hander. He's a sophomore, 6'1", 200 out of Alameda, California. Wu has pitched two and a third, given up a hit, two runs, both earned has walked three and struck out three coming into the game has an ERA of 7.71 and he comes in with a very stressful situation yeah. it's a 2-2 two -two ball game in the top of the eighth bases are loaded and he's facing BYU's power guy in Hayden Latham well here he is huh? Brian Wu versus your three hole Coug hitter in, in Hayden Latham you got got uh, pretty good speed at first and third. You got call that's not, not slow at second, but uh, not when you're faster guys on the team. So uh, a hit here probably can good chance of scoring two runs. Right now, oh, it looks like we're going to pinch, pinch run. Pinch run. Is it Hunter Swap yep. coming in for call? I like that. Hunter Swap at his very young age is what I would like to look like when I get older. <laughs> no kidding, right? That dude is built. Yeah, he's he's definitely put together. And boy, is he fast. 
So Swap now comes in and will run at second base for Brian Call. At the worst here, you're looking for a sack fly. Okay, his second at bat today, he flew out to right. I would look for that right now. I'm okay with that. I do like to get greedy at times, but in this spot in the eighth inning tied ball game, I'm looking for one right now, and if we can get a hit, let's go for two. Left fielder playing closer to left center. There's the first pitch. Oh, the breaking ball. Gets the outside corner. Strike one to Hayden Latham. Any ball hit down the left field line, it's going to score at least two. Because Cabrera is playing way off the line. First baseman's playing in. Wu. Now delivers the 0-1 to Latham. Hayden looks at strike two. And Wu quickly ahead. Hayden Latham, no balls and two strikes. Now with some gas right there, 93 miles an hour, down and away at the knees. So 0-2 count, now we're just battling. See a ball up, put a good swing on it. The 0-2 pitch to Latham. Ground ball chopped towards the second baseman. Over to second for the first out. And Latham safe that's at huge. first. That's huge. And that's going to score Brock Watkins from third. And BYU retakes the lead at 3-2 to two here in the top of the eighth. That's a great job by Hayden to get down the line. I knew once the second baseman had to field that ball to his left, it's going to be really hard to double up Hayden. And he got down the line just enough to beat it out, to be able to take get the RBI and go up a run. Great job by Hayden Latham to be hustling out of the box to beat out the double play, which would have ended the inning. Instead, BYU retakes the lead at 3-2 to two here in the eighth. Cougars now with runners on the corners and two outs. Mitch McIntyre at the plate. Just putting a ball in play right there, though. That's all you got to do. That's the huge thing. Mitch's last at bat, a two-run double. Love to get another base hit now. His team leading 3-2. Woo's first pitch to McIntyre right down the middle for strike one 92 mile an hour fastball it's interesting that you still have to have the third baseman playing in right here with two outs and a runner on third because he's afraid that Mitch could lay down a bunt big time big spot right here for your junior leader already has two RBIs in the game let's make it three absolutely it's time to get greedy outside there are spots we talked about with Hayden. Hayden didn't need to get greedy there. He just needed to find a way to, to drive in a run. He did that. Now with Mitch, now this is where we get greedy, right? I think it's two balls and no strikes. No, it's one and what, one. One and one. One and one. One ball, one strike to Mitch McIntyre. Two outs, runners on the corners. BYU's retaking the lead, three to two. Brian Wu delivers to McIntyre. Just misses away. So two and one. Two balls and one strike, the count. It's a dead red fastball right here. The, le the center fielder's playing shaded to left field. Look at that right center gap right now, Shep. Time for McIntyre to take advantage of that gap. 2-1. Swing and a foul back to the screen. Now two and two to McIntyre. I love Mitch's approach today, though, just going the other way. He, he you know, Drag bunt down the down the third baseline for a hit, double down the line for two RBIs, and then his had a hard line drive into left center for an out. So well, you could tell he was starting to see the ball a little bit better even against Oregon yeah, State, absolutely. and that's carried over into Game One here against Cal Poly. We need him to be good for our offense to be good. So good start for him. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. BYU with two men on, a runner at first and third. McIntyre at the plate. Wu steps off. Both pitcher and hitter will reset. Mitch tightens up the gloves. It's a little bit of a practice swing. Now steps back into the batter's box and awaits the 2-2 pitch from Brian Wu. The 2-2 pitch from Wu. Swing and a foul out of play. Nice job by McIntyre to stay alive. The count remains 2-2. Two two. 94 miles an hour right there. Got some heat. Some nighttime gas right there. My goodness, I'm telling you, that is straight up fuel. It's hard under the lights when a guy's throwing 93 and above. It makes it tough. 
2-2 count to McIntyre. BYU leading 3-2. The 2-2 pitch, low for ball three. And now a full count. Three balls, two strikes. The first baseman, Austin Deming, on deck if McIntyre can get on. Well, Hayden's going to be taken off here. Swap at third. Latham at first. McIntyre at the plate. Facing a full count. Wu sends the payoff pitch. Inside. Oh, man. For ball four. Oh, it hit him. Oh, you're right. Did get a piece. If it didn't hit him, we score a run there. Because that, that ball got past yeah. Emerson. And Swap would have easily scored. But you're right. Home plate umpire said it hit McIntyre. And that's probably why it got away. Because it probably hit his foot. Ricocheted off of it. But it was in the dirt and it, it had a chance to still get away. Uh, tough break. But... Now you've got bases loaded. An opportunity to score two runs with a base hit. Wu on the mound, facing now Austin Deming. We like the eighth inning. This is our inning. Big hit right here, Dem. Deming one for three. as a single and two strikeouts. Love to get second hit of the game. First pitch, looks at strike one. We talked about this in the seventh inning when BYU had the one-run lead and an opportunity to add to it. Getting that insurance run would have been big, and as we saw, it was big because Cal Poly tied the game up at the bottom of the inning. Now BYU leading by one run again as an opportunity to add on. Can they do it? The 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss by Deming, and now Austin quickly behind, 0-2. Shorten up right here, right through the middle. Shorten up, two strikes, two strike approach, bat on the ball, see what can happen. The bases loaded with Cougars. Deming at the plate in the hole, 0-2. Ooh, sends the 0-2 pitch outside. Nice job by Emerson to get the glove on it. He had to reach to his right to do it. Now it's one ball and two strikes to Deming. One ball, two strikes. Wu delivers to Deming. That ball hit into center field. Get over his head. Over the over head the of head. the center fielder and all the way to the wall. Swap scores from third. Latham scoring from second. And scoring from first is Mitch McIntyre. And that's a three-run triple for Austin Deming. And the Cougars have blown this game wide open. It is now 6-2 BYU. Yeah, turned on 93, went right back up the box on a line and I thought Beasley had a beat on it. I thought he was going to run it down right in center but it just over the reach of his head. Two hops the wall. Mitch is easily going to score with his, his speed once it gets to the wall and Deming gets a triple out of it. That's what I'm talking about. Hey it's that 8th inning right? It's all about that 8th inning. BYU has scored 4 runs here in the 8th inning. They had a big 8th inning against Gonzaga where they scored 6 runs and BYU may not be done. There's still a runner at 3rd the batter, Josh Cowden. First pitch outside. BYU now leading 6-2. to two. They've increased their lead in hits to 7-5. to five. That's his first career triple. How about that? Yeah. Attaboy, Austin. Cowden looks at ball one. Two and all count, actually. Two balls, no strikes to Josh Cowden. 2 0 pitch, looks at strike one. Deming at third after a three run triple. Has BYU leading six to two. Wu delivers the 2 1. Goes the other way, but foul. Right in between third base and head coach Mike Littlewood. What a massive hit by Austin Deming. What a great job. As Tuck mentioned, Austin's first career triple. It's pretty dang awesome. 
Two balls, two strikes, two outs. 2-2 two -two pitch low, now full count to Josh Cowden. And the Mustang fans getting a little restless here with their team now trailing by four. Come on, Josh, let's get one more right here. Three two pitch, swing and a miss, and Cowden strikes out. The Cougars are retired, but not before scoring four runs in the top of the eighth. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's six two BYU on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Pinch hitter for Cal Poly here in the bottom of the eighth. Mark Armstrong is the pitch hitter. He's facing Reed McLaughlin. It's been so long since we've seen yeah. a BYU pitcher. I almost forgot who was on the mound for BYU, <laughs> which is good because BYU took a long time in that uh, bottom of the eighth because they were getting so many hits. That ball chopped in front of home plate. Valdez. Oh, boy. Fields it and then throws high. Nice job by Jelilich covering and throwing into second base. But Mark Armstrong now standing at second with nobody out on the throwing error by Valdez. Yeah, a swinging bunt off the end of the bat that went down third base line. Abe sticks it, has time to throw him out, and throws it over first. Defensive and substitutions, by the way, for BYU. Hayden Latham. It's moved from right to left. Jelilich stays in the ball game at right field. Jacob Rogers is now at first base. Austin Deming, who was at first, now over at third. Elijah Green at the plate, swing and a foul. Comes to the plate with a runner in scoring position. Mark Armstrong at second and nobody out. Six two BYU. Now zero and two to Elijah Green. Well, that's why those that triple so huge, right? Absolutely. I mean, it'd be a three to two game right here with the runner at second and nobody out. BYU leading six to two. Four runs in the top of the eighth inning. McLaughlin delivers the 0-2 pitch. It's lined into shallow center. McIntyre there for the first out of the inning. The runner staying at second base, but now one out here in the bottom of the eighth. The catcher, Miles Emerson. One for two on the day. Facing McLaughlin. Reed, great first pitch, called strike one. Great slider right there. On deck, Tyson Corio. Runner on second, one out. McLaughlin delivers to Emerson. Low for ball one. Now one ball and one strike. BYU with two runs in the top of the seventh. Four runs in the top of the eighth. Out hitting the Mustangs 7-6. to six, And they lead 6-2. to two. One ball, one strike. McLaughlin delivers. Emerson takes strike two. Pull up one, two right here. One out runner on second. Who cares if he advances? We're just looking for outs right now. Emerson behind. One ball and two strikes. The one, two pitch low. 
now two and two to Miles Emerson. Emerson, the senior catcher from Spring Valley, California. Where's number 28? 5'11", 195. The 2-2 pitch to Emerson. Ooh. Does not swing at what looked like strike three instead. It's called ball three, and it's now a full count. Yeah, it must be down. So it definitely had the plate. Three balls and two strikes now to Emerson. One out. Runner on second base. Reed delivers the payoff pitch. Line drive right at Danny Jelilich in right field. Makes the catch. The runner does not tag or advance. Runner staying at second base. And now with two outs, the batter, Tyson Corio. Second baseman, Tyson Corio. So far, the Mustangs have left nine on. And BYU would love to make it ten at the end of the bottom of the eighth. BYU so far has only left three on. Done a nice job with men on base today. Once the Cougars got men on, the hit started coming. They lead 6-2 to two here in the bottom of the eighth. McLaughlin to Corio. Strike one is the call. Top of the order, Cole Cabrera on deck if Corio can get on. You know what it's interesting? I've noticed about Randy Sutton behind the dish tonight. He'll be a little bit wide on first called first and second strikes, but when it's the third strike, he really tightens up and makes you really earn it, which I respect that. Two outs, the 0-1 pitch, swing and a foul, and now McLaughlin ahead of the batter, no balls and two strikes. One strike away from sending us to the top of the ninth. Because there's a lot of umpires out there, Shep, that it's the opposite. They make you paint, paint for strike one and strike two, and then on three they might give you a baseball or so off the plate. But uh, he's kind of the opposite. He'll give you a baseball or two off the plate for strike one and strike two, and then strike three, you've got to earn it. Corio awaiting the 0-2 pitch for McLaughlin. Reed delivers. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Went around. They appeal, and they say that Corio went around for strike three, and the Mustangs go down swinging, sort of, in the bottom of the eighth, we head to the top of the ninth at 6-2 BYU on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball alongside Tuckett Slade. Here's Jason Shepard. Craig Colon out to pitch the top of the ninth inning for Cal Poly. Colon wearing number 35, a senior from San Francisco, California, right-handed pitcher, 6'3", 210. First batter he will face is the catcher, Abraham Valdez. Abe is lined out, grounded out, and struck out. BYU leading 6-2 in the top of the ninth inning. 6-7-3 and three for BYU, 2-6-0 and zero for Cal Poly. Colin's a big guy, 6'3", 210. Valdez swings at the first pitch. Get out of play. Your wish is granted. That ball just kept sailing over the netting. You know the best part about the radio is, Shep, Mm -hmm. is that There's no cameras on us, so when we have a moment that we just had right there where I really wanted to say something when you talked about, because I know you love the fact that you're a smaller guy, I really want to say something there, and you thought I was coming with something, and I didn't, and to see the smile on your face was pretty classic. (laughs) The 0-1 pitch (laughs) to Abe Valdez, taken for ball one, one ball and one strike. BYU leading by four runs in the top of the ninth. The 1-1 pitch. 
Popped up. Right over home plate. Sailing high. Nobody can see it. The home plate. The reason I thought it was popped up straight above home plate they was because the, there. the catcher, Miles Emerson, was standing waiting for it to come down. The ball actually landed closer towards the screen. Well, and where the catcher was standing, I'm like, Abe, why aren't you running? If he drops that, it's in fair territory. And then it bounces a foot from the fence behind <laughs> home plate. It's, it's crazy. It's like 20 yards away. Yeah. Or 20 feet away, rather. Valdez behind. Make One them, ball and two strikes. Make them pay for that right there. Colin delivers the one-two pitch. Swing and a foul out of play once again. Valdez stays alive. One ball and two strikes. We're in the top of the ninth. Abe 0 for 3. On deck, Brock Watkins. The one-two pitch. Low for ball two. Definitely cooling off here. Temperature in the low 50s now. 52 degrees, as a matter of fact. The 2-2 pitch to Valdez. Ground ball to the shortstop, who bobbles it. Can't get it. Abe's going to run that one out. He'll end up at first. Nice job by Abe Valdez to just hustle. The shortstop bobbled it. Could never regain, and Abe Valdez now standing at first with nobody out in the top of the ninth. Yeah, good job there by Abe, just putting the ball in play. Putting the ball in play, make them make plays. You've seen how today we've had three errors not making plays, and that was their first blemish of the game. Marin Cons with the error. It's the first error for Cal Poly. Watkins at the plate, takes strike one. Watkins waiting the 0-1 pitch. Looks at ball one, now one ball and one strike. It's funny, Shep. I was rooming with Trent Pratt last weekend in Arizona, and as the hitting coach, you know, he gets frustrated when the hitters don't do what they're supposed to do, and hitting's tough. And we're like, well, at least we know that we're a really good hitting team at the end of the game, <laughs> right? Watkins pops it up. Second baseman moves to his left, makes the play, and Watkins is retired for the first out of the inning. And, you know, if you're going to if you're gonna be – a good hitting team late in games, that's going to give you a chance to come back and win a lot of games. If you, with the pitching the way it is, I mean, we've given up two runs today, but they're unearned, right? Not one earned run on the day. And we've just slowly been sneaking good at-bats in, and that seventh and eighth inning explodes like it has been throughout the year, <laughs> early this year yes. as our fifth game. But uh, as long as our runs are more than theirs, it's all that matters. Jacob Rogers at the plate, swing and a miss. First pitch he sees from Cole. Yeah, Rogers is a transfer from UNLV. Had to sit out last year. He's a sophomore this year. Invariably, Rogers and I would, at Miller Park, crossing the street, we'd end up at the crosswalk at the same time and would walk over to the park at the same time a lot. Really? So we got to talk quite a bit on those short walks across from the parking lot to uh, to. Miller Park, yeah, swing and a miss for strike two to Jacob Rogers. Yeah, he's a great kid, comes from a great family. I actually got a chance to coach him five years ago on a summer ball team, so it's kind of fun to get to see him here now. And The 0-2 pitch to Rogers, low for ball one. One out, Abe Valdez at first. We're in the top of the ninth. BYU with a four-run lead at 6-2. to two. We are at Baggett Stadium. On the campus of Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, California. Game one of a four-game series. Tomorrow's game, 6 o'clock, first pitch local time, 7 Mountain. The 1-2 is a line drive foul down the left field line. It'll be a doubleheader on Saturday to wrap up the four-game series. 
I believe, 1 and 4.30 are the scheduled yep. times for the game on Saturday. About a half hour after the first game ends is usually what you do, sometimes 40 minutes. One ball, two strikes to Jacob Rogers. One out, one runner on at first base, and Abe Valdez. Colin delivers, swinging a foul. The count remains, one ball and two strikes. Oh, Rogers coming in here and battling, love it. 6 2, 175, or excuse me, he's 6 4, 205. Say, I was looking at Cowden's yeah, stats. I was about to say you're cheating him here. He's, you're cheating him. He's bigger than that. <laughs> I took the, uh, the two inches yes. there, and now I'm. Five, like 5'11". Five, 5'11". Five, 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 oh, 5'5". Five, five. Oh, cool. Kill to be 5'11". One, two, swing, and that ball hit deep down the left field line. That had home run distance, but it carried foul. Yeah, I love it. I love a guy coming in, getting a chance to hit for the first time. He did play defense last inning. Now he's at first. But uh, I'd love for him to find a way to win this and get a hit right here. You're right. Really good guy. You want to see guys like this succeed. Absolutely. Have some early success in, in some of his early playing time he's getting at the season. One ball, two strikes. Rogers pops it up. The shallow right. Green there. Retire Rogers for the second out of the inning. You know who I want to see, see succeed right now? Danny Jelilich. Jelilich, man. I know he's pressing so much early in this year. I know there's no one more upset than him about not getting that bunt down, you know, last inning. But his teammates picked him up. Yes. Right? And, and I would love to see him just hit a just an absolute missile base hit right here and get him rolling. Jelilich 0 for 1. Steps into the batter's box with two outs and a runner on. Colin. First pitch, strike one to Danny Jelilich. Craig Colon on the mound. 6'3", 210 senior from San Francisco. Cougars leading 6'2", in the top of the ninth. The 0-1. Low for ball one. One ball and one strike to Jelly. Jelly comes from uh, the family of baseball players. My goodness, they've so he had a player, his brother at UCLA, brother at Pepperdine, and now him. So they love playing baseball in that family. They're talented at it. Yeah, from Laverne, California. The 1-1 pitch, swing and a miss. My favorite part of the Jellich family is their mom. My goodness, she makes the best chocolate chip cookies. And every time we're in California and they travel to come, she always brings them with her. And they're just I'm talking. Were, were they in Arizona? They were in Arizona. Okay, because yeah. I saw the the chocolate chip when cookies making its way oh, yeah. into the hotel. Yes. I'll eat at least 10 of them. Well, the 1 2 pitch struck him out. Danny Jelilich strikes out for the second time. And that'll do it for the Cougars in the top of the ninth. BYU looking to close things out in the bottom of the inning, leading 6 to 2 on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball alongside Tuckett Slade. Here's Jason Shepard. Bottom of the ninth inning, McCade Johnson, the new pitcher for BYU. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on 107.9 FM KUMT Randolph. You're listening to Cougar Baseball on BYU Radio. McCade Johnson, the right-handed pitcher, freshman out of Dallas, Georgia, 6'6", 190, And you'll remember back on Monday in the game against number 25 Oregon State, McCade came in and got the final out and showed quite a bit of emotion after doing so, and rightfully so. First pitch to Cole Cabrera, taken for strike one. 94 miles an hour on that fastball. BYU with a four-run lead here in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's 6-2 BYU. Six runs on seven hits. The 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss by Cabrera. And McCade now quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes. Six runs on seven hits. Three errors for BYU. Two runs on six hits. And one error for the Mustangs. McCade delivers the one-two pitch. That ball lined into the gap. Danny Jelilich on the move from right field and lays out and makes a fantastic catch. What a play by Danny Jelilich. That ball looked like it was going to get down in the gap, but Danny used the speed and picked up the first out of the inning. 
What an athletic play by Danny Jelilich. One away here in the bottom of the ninth. And that was a minimum of a double if that ball gets down. Nick Marincons now steps into the batter's box with nobody out. Or excuse me, with nobody on and one out. Marin Cons facing the freshman, McCade Johnson. The 0-1. Swing and a pop-up. Will get out of play for strike two. And for the second time in a row, McKay Johnson ahead of the batter. 0-2. BYU looking to begin this four-game series with a victory. And improve to three and two. Both teams two and two. The 0-2 pitch, ground ball. To second base, nice job there by Pintar to glove and throw to first for the second out of the inning. Two up, two down here in the bottom of the ninth for BYU pitcher McKay Johnson. That brings in Bradley Beasley, the best hitter of this Mustang lineup. It's one for four on the day. The good news is he can't do any damage with nobody on base right now. But if you're McKay Johnson, you're looking to just end things. The first pitch to Beasley, taken for ball one. BYU with two runs in the seventh, four in the eighth. Gives them their 6-2 lead. Beasley with a pop-up into center field. Mitch McIntyre there makes the catch. And this ball game is over. That's a BYU winner. The Cougars take game one of the four-game series against Cal Poly. Your final score from San Luis Obispo, California, 6-2, to two, BYU over Cal Poly. We'll take a break. We'll go over some stats, and we'll have our post-game interviews coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.